Hi there, David here, and today I wanna to share with you five Reaper features that I love to use in my work as a sound designer creating a sound effects. Now, not all of these features are gonna be Reaper specific. I know some other DAWs have them as well, or some version of them, but I really love Reaper for how easy and accessible these features are and just how useful they are. So with that said, before we jump into our project, if you haven't checked it out yet, I have a gift for you. If you're a sound designer, it's my sound designer starter pack. There's over 900 sound effects that you can grab in there. It's absolutely free links so will be in the description below. And there's everything from monster sounds, spells, magic, whooshes, a whole bunch of stuff. So check it out if you are interested. All right, with that said, let's get into our project and I'll show you what those features are. All right, the first feature that I love uh, inside of Reaper and that I use quite often is called the show last touch parameter. So if you ever have like some sort of effects or a synth or something that you're using and you're just playing around with this and let's say you are recording it and uh, you're moving it around and, and you want to automate it. Well, that's great. But what's really nice about this last show, last touch parameter is, is let's say I'm touching this, this knob here and I can just click on this preset. I have it assigned to a preset here and then here it is. Like I can just grab this and then suddenly start just going here and just start to automate this parameter right here, just like that. Super, super easy to do. So inside of Reaper, if you wanna see where this is inside of the action list, I have it here, I can find it here. It's under show parameter modulation link for last touched effects parameter, right? And like I said, it's just gonna show you the uh, channel here so that you can just modulate it super easily. Now there's another way that you can do this inside of a Reaper and it's just to click on this trim button and inside of here, it'll show you all of your plugins and everything that's assignable within that plugin. And then you can make it visible from here. So in here, if I wanted to use that exact same one, I could make this exact same band that I had before. So band number two, and here it is. And now I have it right here. And again, I can go back into here and then start modulating it again. So I know other uh, other DAWs have this, uh, but I just found that this, inside of Reaper is just super easy to access and just super easy to use, right? I know inside of like some other DWs, you can just touch it and then it'll automatically show up. I don't know if you can do that inside of Reaper. You probably can. Somebody can probably leave a comment and let me know, but I just really like how easy it is to access this and I can just do it with a quick shortcut on my keyboard. All right, number two is parameter modulation. So once again, let's say I have this plugin here and uh, I wanna modulate, let's say my low end over time. So uh, for this uh, low end push, I wanna modulate it over time. So what I can do is I can bring up the parameter modulation here. And if you, uh, so I have it assigned to a shortcut, but if you don't, you can go under here, uh, parameter, uh, and then parameter modulation slash MIDI link, click on that, and then it'll bring that up. And here, now you can assign an LFO to this parameter. And there you go. Now you can like start modulating this LFO without having some sort of third party plugin or something that modulates it. It's all built inside of Reaper, which is awesome. So here you can change the speed, you can change the strength. So maybe you'd only want it to go up to about half here, something like that, right? You can also change the phase, right? And this is gonna be in sync with your dot tempo here if you click on it, on it here, right? And then of course you can change to different shapes. So you have a square, triangle, maybe you want just a random LFO that's just gonna randomly choose the different settings, right? So you have a lot of cool options here. And another one that's fun is this is inside the LFO, but also what you can do is take audio control signal. So what that's gonna do is take the audio from your audio clip and, and modulate this parameter based on the amplitude of the audio. So based on the volume, you can do that from the audio or you can choose it from another track. Let's say you have another track down here and maybe you want another, you have an, uh, another audio file and you want to take that, the signal from that file to modulate the, um, the parameter. You can do that using here. Now it's not showing up here because I don't have anything on there, uh, but you could do that, especially if it's routed. So I think you have to route it into here. So maybe I'll go like that. Right, so now if I go into here, I should be able to see it if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so right here, three and four. So now it's gonna take audio from this channel and I can modulate it using that, that signal. So right now, obviously I don't have any audio in there, but if I did, then you could do that. So that's super awesome, especially to create some dynamic sounds and, and just uh, modulating things over time. Awesome for creating sound effects. So that's another feature inside of Reaper that I really like. All right, the third feature inside of Reaper is called layouts and screen sets. And this you can find inside of view here. And you can see it here, screen sets slash layouts. I have it set to uh, control E as my shortcut, but you can open it up here. And here is what, what you can do is you can create uh, setups the way you want your Reaper, Reaper to be set up. So let me quickly kind of show you what that looks like, okay? so. Here I have one setup that I have, it's like this. I like to have my channel here on the side based on whatever I have selected, okay? And I have it on the side so I can see my uh, plugins, I can see my channel if I wanna change it, anything here. My routing, everything's here, right? I can see it all on the side, plus I have it up here. So that, this is one view that I like to have. 
uh, there's another view here where I can have my channel at the bottom here. And then so I can see everything, all of my channels that I have, and then I can work that way, right? I also have other setups where I can see my mixer on my second screen. Unfortunately, you can't see it here, but it is here on my second screen. Okay, so I can just, just with one click of a shortcut, I can switch quickly between these different views. Uh, whenever I'm working with video, I have another screen set that I have set up where I can have my video here. I also have like uh, my, my time code here for the big clock, right? And then I also have like my mixer here so I can see everything super quickly and easily. This is all on my second screen, so I can't really show you, unfortunately, but uh, it is all there and that's how I have it set up. So I can quickly s switch between these different screen sets super fast, super easily, and uh, based on what I'm doing and or, or what I'm working with. So super convenient and really nice. All right, number four that a feature that I like is called sub project. So if I go into file here, what you can do is you can open a new project tab. And what this is gonna do is open basically a sub project or just a new project. And what's nice about this is, look, I can quickly go between different projects like this and I can open multiple different projects like this. And now, I don't know if other DAWs can do this, but I remember inside of Cubase and New Window, I absolutely could not do that. And if I did, uh, you could open another one, but then it would like shut down uh, one of the previous projects. But with this, everything works. Like if I have audio in here and I have audio in here, everything's gonna play. If I, I just have to go into the proper tab, press play, and then it's gonna play the audio. Go in this tab, press play, it's gonna play the audio. Right? I don't know that other DAWs can do that for sure. I know Cubase and Uendo couldn't, but this is super convenient because let's say I'm working on like a master project here and I have all my sounds uh, laid out across uh, different tracks and everything and I have a video going, whatever. Okay, and let's say I just want to design another sound that I'm just missing. I'm just missing this like one sound or layer that I'm designing. Uh, and that happens often where I just, there's this other sound that I just don't have and I just want to design it. Well, instead of like creating it within my master project where it's going to get kind of messy and maybe I'll have other tracks just to kind of try to design a sound. I can open it inside of a sub project here. And if I need like, let's say three, four, five layers to create this new sound, I can just do it in here, export it, and then put it back into here, right? It's super easy and convenient. I don't have to like mess up all my project and, and have it all nicely organized and then su suddenly not have it organized because I have to add drag and drop in other different sounds and stuff like that. So anyways, it's just a super nice way to keep your projects clean and organized. And yeah, all right, number five, the uh, fifth thing that I love about Reaper, a feature that I really like about it is you can have third-party scripts. And this is huge. I absolutely love this. Uh, basically, you have uh, third-party uh, companies or just uh, developers that design things for Reaper. So let's say I'm just going to drag a sound into here so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. And we have a, an actual example of, of what we can do here. Okay, so I have this sound effect here. I'm just going to drag it and drop it into here. It sounds like this. All right, cool, sounds fine. One of the Reaper scripts that you can get, and this one's free, and a lot of them are free, by the way, this is called LKC Variator, and with this, I can just mutate, well, what they call mutate, uh, this file. And basically what it's gonna do is gonna randomize uh, these parameters based on what I have. So I have four parameters selected here, pan, pitch, tape, stretch, and rate. And it's only gonna do a little bit, because I only have a little bit, but let's say I wanna do about 50% for each of these. Okay, and then I can mutate this one file that I have selected, and then it's gonna mutate it. Now it's gonna be different. Right, so change the pan, the pitch, the tape stretch, and the rate, and now I have this new file. Well, you can hopefully you can see how powerful this can be when you have multiple different files uh, that you're going through, and you just need to create variation really quickly or whatever. So, uh, another one you can do is like Chernobyl here, which is just going to create a whole bunch of like garbage mess, but it's really cool. Right, so this is one of them. There's a whole bunch of other Reaper scripts. Some are paid, like NVK Create. That one's awesome for layering up sounds. Uh, you also have uh, other Reaper scripts for like uh, UCS renaming tool where you can rename all your sound files, your audio files, and, and have them all universal uh, with the universal category system and have it all compatible for that. You have some with, like render blocks where you can like, let's say I had like a, a thing here and I had another one here. Well, what I can do is I can grab these and I can uh, create a block with them. Uh, there's nothing in there, so it's not going to work. But let's say I grab these. Let's put it under here. Let's grab all this. Let's render block it. Right, and now as they're render blocked like this, what I can do is I can just grab one section of it, and because they're all linked, they're all going to move together. Uh, like this is a bad example, actually, because they're kind of all messy. But normally you have like just one one big block, and you can grab it around. And it just looks really nice and easy to see. So anyways, my point is there's a whole bunch of different Reaper scripts and developers that are developing these scripts that are super useful for sound design, specifically inside of Reaper. So uh, with that said, I hope you like that. I hope you uh, like these features. If, you, if there's some features that I missed that, that you think are really awesome, please share them in the comments below. I'd love to learn from you. A reminder to grab that sound pack. Also, I'm just gonna put a video uh, right here and the screen in front of you. If you wanna know more about Reaper and how to set up the theme and customize some of the settings for sound design and creating sound effects, click on that video. I hope to see you in the next video.